This is the Fertile Mindset Podcast, where we explore all the emotional aspects of fertility to support you on your path to parenthood. My name is Sarah Holland. I'm the Fertile Mindset Coach and a mother to two children after my own fertility challenges. I hope you find all the support and inspiration you need within this podcast to carry you forward on your fertility journey towards your own successful outcome. It's also my wish that through listening to these episodes, you rediscover how to enjoy life now and live it to the full while you wait for your baby. Now, let's begin today's episode. Hello, and welcome back to the Fertile Mindset Podcast. Today, I'm sharing a beautiful conversation that I had with Helen Davenport Peace from At The Fold. You're going to love Helen. She's a yoga teacher with her own lived experience of fertility issues, and she brings a very caring and very gentle approach to fertility that really takes the whole person, the life you're living into account. At one point in this conversation, she says that she believes in living well, And that's what I love about Helen's support. She's focused on each person receiving the support that they need to live their life well while they wait for their baby. There are some practical ideas and tips in this conversation too, lots that you can take away and incorporate into your own life. And if you are a subscription member of the Fertile Mindset Sanctuary, Helen will be joining us for a live chat. Check your email for the date and time. Now, I hope you enjoy listening to our conversation. So hello, Helen. Welcome. Lovely, lovely to have you on the podcast. Oh, hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. What a privilege. Well, it's been a little while, hasn't it? We've been chatting about this and had some really, really good conversations. And I just felt like I wanted to share our conversations with more people because we've been talking about some interesting stuff related to fertility and perhaps things that people don't always talk about so much, um, but really important conversations to have. So I can't wait to get stuck into this with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, we've had some great chats, haven't we? Um, and I said to you right back at the beginning that it feels like a really long time ago now, way before social media and fertility kind of were coming together. Um, about 10 years ago, I think I was listening to you on a podcast, I think it must have been. So you were an integral part of my journey. Um, so it it's just feels really lovely to be here now speaking with you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, that's, and I remember that was so lovely to hear because I think I'd spotted you on Instagram first and, and really intrigued by some of your stories and, and the topics you were talking about, which we'll get into. Um, but yeah, then when we got in contact and you already knew me and you'd been using EFT, that was it was just amazing. I love it how we just circle back to each other and we all end up meeting again. <laughs> it's alignment, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into what we're going to talk about then so tell us first a bit about yourself and and what it is that you do and you bring to the whole fertility experience for people okay well so my name is Helen Davenport Peace um Peace being my married name so it's real because I'm a yoga teacher I think people think I just it's a beautiful name <laughs> very lucky beautiful <laughs> it's real uh, and I have recently built a studio in my garden so I'm a yoga teacher specializing in uh, fertility yoga um and it the the space that I've built the fold I really want this to be a hub for people that are trying to conceive and in that community to be able to come to online or in person and meet other people whilst like doing things that really nurture themselves so that's my vision for the space um and that was born out of my own experience so I it took me five years to have my son Uh, three rounds of IVF treatment and all of the things that happen to people in between that so I always say that just sounds such a potted version of what happened but there's a lot of many many chapters to that story Um, and I always knew that I wanted to do something however my I say it's I know how my story kind of ended really Um, but I knew that however my story ended I wanted to do something with that community because I had felt so isolated during my experience Um, and everybody goes through their experience in individual ways but for me I was really seeking community and that was very very hard to come by so I made some friends on an online forum uh, Mumsnet actually and they were my lifeline and I thought everybody deserves to be able to have a lifeline of people so I knew I wanted to do that 
But then the other thing that I had really, really struggled with through infertility and through other areas of my life, really, was anxiety and the anxiety of waiting, of surgery, of treatment, um, had quite an impact on me physically and my physical health and my mental well-being. Um, and I wanted to be able to support people with that because I found things that did help me and did support me, EFT with you being one of them. Um, uh, but I've always been a yogi, so yoga, I've done yoga since I was 18. Uh, so yeah, I did my teacher training uh, five years ago now, I think. And I'm a teacher by trade, so I'm a university lecturer. I was a primary teacher in my 20s. So it felt like a natural progression for me to take my teaching into a different landscape and have recently just finished my lecturing career to do this full time because it's just the, the passion is there and the work that I've done over the last few years has been has meant such a lot to me. And so that's kind of where I'm at. You find me at the very beginning of doing this full time. Yeah, a very, a very big step, but a really exciting step. And I'm so pleased on behalf of everyone in the fertility community that you've taken that brave step because already the offerings that you have at the fold are beautiful and I think everything you've just talked about there community nurturing understanding all the many layers and facets of a fertility journey you know and how it really does impact on us um, you are already providing such a great deal of support so I'm really excited now your full-time focus is this you know what else is going to come next so so what a lovely intro and understanding of how you approach fertility, which may well be quite different from, from perhaps the standard approach of looking at the physical body and balancing hormones and, you know, taking medication and whatever else is being done on a physical level. But yeah. I always get the feeling, Helen, that much like me as well, you know, you're really concerned with the experience and the life that is lived through this fertility journey. Yeah, so true. I um it's about living well isn't it living well through it in a physical way in a mental way it's so hard so I, I very much kind of I put myself in a slightly different box to a lot of fertility yoga offerings um I'm not ever going to come out and say this is going to increase your chance of pregnancy by 25 percent or have it as an out I don't focus on the outcome and there are lots of wonderful places people can go for nutritional information and all the things that you know, positive changes that they want to make but I think for me after living with making those changes for so many years and trying so hard to do all the things I saw you done a reel recently of making a list of all the things that you're doing to try and support yourself I think my main aim is to come back to the body and to come back to you and regulating the nervous system even if that's just for the hour that we might be together in a session but trying to get some looking at some of the micro tools that we can use really when we are in that state of I think infertility can put us in that real state of fight or flight because there's so many things happen along the way whether that's when you're just starting out and you're waiting you know to see if your period comes or not and then whether you're waiting to think whether you might go and see the GP there's so much waiting and tension that I think we start to accrue in our bodies um so I think my work is a little bit about trying to look at where we might have blown ourselves a bit off course in terms of looking after us. So it's a bit of a homecoming, really, coming back home to ourselves and finding the things that soothe, finding the things that can help us when things uh, can, are really tough. So I think that's my that's my specialism, I think. Mm. And you mentioned the word nurture quite early on as well. Mm. And yeah I, I don't think always a lot of time is made for that or even we know how to nurture ourselves or we go down kind of the typical roots of self-care thinking does that mean having you know a bubble bath and a massage what does it mean to nurture and and really practice this good self-care and at the times we need it and sometimes we don't have the energy for it or even the focus and the, the energy and the ability to you know know what to do when we we are struggling well, I think I, I can only speak about my journey and maybe it will resonate with anyone listening, but I was looking for the fix. So mm -hmm. what started off in the early days of, you know, supplementation and then looking at diet and pineapple juice and all of the things. And then kind of it was like a progression. It went into holistic therapies, maybe acupuncture and reflexology and um, 
exercise and it, it, but by the end by like year four it, it become so I'd become quite rigid I think in looking for what's going to be the next thing that I could try you know is it going to be homeopathy I think if someone had said go and swim in the sacred lake in Australia <laughs> and I could have afforded to go I would have gone and swum in the lake because I was looking for the fix and I think that is perfectly understandable and um you know deeply yeah. I've got a deep sympathy with me of then to be yeah. just so striving well I, I sat on a fertility chair in some kind of cellar space in Saint-Emilion in France and because this chair was supposed to be the fertility chair so yeah we do those things <laughs> yeah, it matters you know it's like what could I if I keep putting things in the bucket then surely sooner or later it's going to be the thing um but I think actually what I got completely lost I completely lost myself and so then for me what started to happen was it manifested itself quite physically as anxiety is prone to do so I had a lot of digestive issues going on my eczema had become quite bad um I got a lot of fatigue there was also just palpitations quite you know full-on physical symptoms because I just I don't think that I was I was in a quite a yang energy so I was doing a lot of running because I felt like I wanted to be you know peak fitness I was doing a lot of hot yoga because that kind of helped with my I don't know I just got myself into that kind of a student mindset really if I do enough and I try yeah. hard enough I'm going to crack this because in most of the bits of my life if I'd done that I could get results mm. and I felt so out of control but I think I had to pair it right back and just stop <laughs> just stop uh, and EFT kind of found me around that point so you were kind of part of that and I changed some of the yoga practices that I was doing but I think really the more work that I've done and the more trainings that I've done and the more you know things that I have been involved with over the past five six years I got a, I feel like I wish that I could put my mind my brain into me you know 10 years ago and say like you might just need to take a breath hand on the heart it's really slow down um and I hadn't done enough of that and I think a lot of people come to me actually are really not in that place they are at such a fast pace trying to um get where they want to be that they are in that state of anxiety and it's about just being tender yeah tender nurturing restorative um looking after you in really little ways and finding which ways work and, and different things work for different people as I know you and me have spoken about. Mm. Yeah, there is, is that temptation to just keep doing stuff and actually feeling like you're getting somewhere, you know, believing yeah. that you're getting somewhere. But I think it is at that point, and maybe it's the point that like you say when you found EFT and it is the point that lots of people come to me, it's that actually this feels too much and what I've done that I thought would support myself has actually caused even more stress and I feel like I'm perhaps in a worse place physically and emotionally than I was before um, and we come back to that yeah what do I really need then what strip it right back to the the real nurturing mm -hmm. and I know we said that we wanted to talk about things that were easy to implement you know that that wouldn't be big big self-care <laughs> things to do you know but that actually can be smaller actions and smaller yeah. tools that we use so yeah I'd love to hear I feel really passionate about that and I think the reason mm. that I do is because sometimes along the way of of trying to conceive there are points in time that are almost unbearable aren't they you know you're waiting for that embryologist call you are waiting to do a pregnancy test after IVF that's cost thousands of pounds it's almost um, um, going up the wall um unbearableness I think and I think then when people might say well it'd be really good for you to do a guided meditation it's like I can't <laughs> I can't even do that I can't do a yoga class I feel actually a little bit paralyzed with anxiety then what might we do because it's our it's our nervous system isn't it going into that um am I, am I gonna fight am I gonna fly it's the adrenaline and how could we maybe take a step backwards um into that state of rest and digest and it could be really micro things so and different things that work for different people so I could talk through some some ideas if that that might be helpful to people I'd love, um, that. I'd love that personally as well because I think we all need this wherever we are in our life so those, I, those yeah. micro ideas I think of it as a kind of our inner compass so mm. I run a six-week course called North Star which is all focused about our inner compass 
And I like that metaphor of finding your North Star of like, what is the thing that actually, that is the thing that soothes and grounds me relatively quickly. It doesn't take very much time and it might just bring me into a point where I might then be able to access something that is soothing, even if that is watching, you know, a funny program, you know, but if sometimes we can't do anything, we're just stuck. So for me, I think I think of it through the senses and we all learn in different ways and, and in a similar way to being different learners, I think we soothe in different ways as well. And I don't think we always know what soothes us and it can be really self-soothing is a really huge topic and I know we haven't got loads of time to go into it now, but I think senses is a good way of thinking about it. So we could um, think about touch. So it might be just very simply placing a hand on the heart and just noticing what is happening for you at that moment. So what am I feeling? And you don't have to attach a word to that because I think sometimes people will say, how are you, you know, I'm gonna tune into how I'm feeling and you can just sit there and think, oh, I, don't, I don't really know. It doesn't have to have a word. It can just be a kind of listening to you. And that self-contact of a hand on the heart or the belly or even the lower back, back of the neck, um, maybe a little bit of a jaw massage. It's just, uh, it's, it's making contact with yourself as if you were nurturing another person and it can be very, very steadying. Um, so I know a lot of people that, a lot of my um, people that come to me, hand on the heart, it's been a very useful tool for them. Um, the, think of them as like little anchors. So we're on our little boat and it's been really rocked around and we kind of find these little anchors that might be able to anchor us. So we've got touch and, and with touch, it might just be that actual sensory contact. So it might be, you know, maybe you just need to get into bed with clean sheets and you are just kind of can be soothed and that's just enough for that time. Um, the master anchor I tend to think of is the breath. So we might just find a breath technique that works for us we might just notice the breath so you don't have to do any counting or anything complicated i think the word breath work in itself can sound quite inaccessible sometimes and what is it it's a bit mysterious but just noticing we go all day quite often without noticing our breath and it might just be that you take one deep inhale and one deep exhale and you just notice the breath and notice those micro state changes that just tuning into our breath can make there are soothing breath techniques that you can use. So you might breathe in for three, breathe out for five, different combinations of counts. Some people like even numbers, so a nice conscious breath in of five and out for five. That can be just simple. It doesn't need to be anything complex or, you know, sitting for half an hour doing breath work. It could just be really, really small, these little tiny tools. Um, and then coming back to that kind of, sensing it may be that you have a smell so it might be that you have a particular perfume or candle or essential oil or something that you can start to anchor into feeling quite calm that you can practice with and um, so if you're doing something if you just you know just doing a little bit of breath and hand on the heart you then you might integrate a smell so you can kind of have it as an anchoring um aroma that can be that can be helpful then so then if you're going into another stressful situation you could take something that smells like that and it could be whatever that works for you um and it's about building those kind of yeah like aromatic anchoring can be very helpful um and similarly with music so it may be that you put together some music that's just very very soothing for you and you you might listen to some some have a playlist I think our brain, we kind of get that muscle memory of things that can bring us into a calmer place. And then if we can start to layer those things together, then that can be quite helpful. I've, um, I work with people a lot with injections and injection anxiety. And I think having that kind of layering, okay, I'm gonna have a hand on my heart. I'm gonna have a really lovely song that I know is kind of soothing to me that you listen to when you're not feeling anxious or that you smell those lovely things and you think about, I don't know, maybe you smell uh, the lovely candle you've got in your room and you you light that candle they're just tiny little things just the act of lighting a candle and sitting quite quietly they don't have to be you know you don't have to go and do an hour yoga practice that might just be what you need in that moment so they're the kind of things that I talk about there's those small small actions um, and I've got loads of those and I think some of them will probably overlap with things that you do Sarah like mantra and the power of having a little affirmation that can be really like I am safe hand on heart and then you mix it with a mantra so it's almost like you've got a little it's like a little buffet and you kind of choose <laughs> a little bit that work for you like I oh, that didn't that breath and I've got a, I've got someone that works with me that doesn't like counted breath 
that's great you don't have to do it you might just breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth or you might you know find the thing that works for you and it's about kind of tuning into ourselves again finding our frequency rather than looking at some of the external things I think it's actually coming home to you yeah yeah because when we constantly look outside of ourselves we start to feel scattered and disconnected and you know it's very hard to function and very hard to think clearly and and know yourself and make decisions and all sorts of things and I those were so simple and so beautiful that I did each of them as you were talking about them so just to demonstrate I just thought this is so easy I can do it now while I'm listening to you you know I can hold my hand on my heart I can take those breaths and I had a little oil blend that a friend gave me actually um with the theme of pause so that felt just really appropriate that she'd made me this oil blend so I just put a little bit of that in my palms as well the only bit I didn't do is the music because you know that wouldn't be appropriate right now your talisman and mm. in other things that I do I have like um it's like my worry stone you can buy like little yeah. worry pebbles and that uh, if I'm I mean I've got ongoing at the moment I've got ongoing issues with skin cancer which there's a whole nother story we could talk about so I still need these tools myself I have a worry stone that I have in my pocket and when I'm in the waiting room feeling if I'm feeling anxious I can start to call on some of those tools and, and you know I can look around place myself in the room look at the things that I can see think about the things that I can hear I might integrate the breaths might rub my stone might have my smell and that these little things keep us from going into kind of a free state where we can become a bit dissociated or a bit lost you know mm. scattered it's exactly what you say and we're not it can just kind of they're, they're grounding tools uh, I mean outside you can go if you stand on the grass in bare feet just like that earthing so simple such an easy thing to do in the morning or um, if you're out and about in a park, if you don't have a garden, you just take your shoes off, you know, touch the earth. I think that's such a small thing. Look at the clouds um, and the impermanence of them. And they're, they're the things that I think sometimes we just, they seem so small that we, we don't, we, you know, we don't integrate them in a way that maybe that's all we need. And, and if, you know, maybe that is your yoga for the day is that you stood on the grass and looked at the clouds. Um, <laughs> sometimes that's you know those little things are as powerful as the bigger gestures I think yeah the simplicity of life isn't it I think we've become so wrapped up in what we can do with technology and amazing things that we can do you know we forget the simple things yeah. and what strikes me listening to you as well and imagining everyone that comes together with the the events that you create and the gatherings that you have is how this is kind of an opportunity opportunity on a fertility journey that we didn't expect you know very few people go into this journey knowing that they're going to have problems with their fertility but then they're on this longer journey and they start to discover more about themselves and the ways they can operate that are good for them and that don't work for them and the ones you know that really resonate like we're talking about here and once you've had that opportunity to step into a new way of doing something and these tiny little things as well they're not you know it's not major things but it's new habits isn't it and new learnings about what works for you and what doesn't it's uh it's learnings for life isn't it it's not just for this trying to conceive part of the journey because I know that's something you're very passionate about yeah, as well isn't it it's recognizing the do. whole wider journey it's it's I think for me I, I kind of it's it can you put it in a box can't you and think well that's I was anxious because of that but I think there's so many things come up at beyond beyond trying to conceive outside of trying to I mean look at the context that we're living in right now um I think those they can having that toolkit can serve you in so many different places and for so many different things that happen and I think the thing that I really kind of want to just reiterate is that we, we all need different things you know so for some people it might be that you go out for that run because that's what you need and that is what soothes you so I think we're all we're all different and we all need different things um, but it's about giving yourself permission to find the things that work for you and not worry that something that works for somebody else doesn't work for you. I mean, you mentioned technology and I know that's something we've discussed is that Zoom has been really powerful for me to notice with the, the classes that I've run that on Zoom, where everybody's at home, they really can craft their, their experience in a, in a yoga session exactly how they want. You know, if you want to turn your screen off and and just lie down which may be what you need on that day or have a cup of tea and listen to the guided meditation or 
choose which movements you want to do. I think Zoom sessions have allowed people to really um, feel safe to be able to do what's right for them, which with fertility yoga, particularly when people are going through treatment, is so important that those sessions are differentiated. So when you work with a fertility person like on a, on a journey one-to-one -one for yoga and they're coming for fertility yoga just for them, then you can really blend it with the, um, the side point in their cycle that they're at. Um, but you can't do that in a group. So you have to really differentiate. And that's why it's really important for me to know who's coming to my classes and to give. Um, and it, it, in the instances when I've worked in, in spaces where I haven't, it's really about giving people that permission to, to listen to your body and do what you want to do. And I think my big mission there is to really work out how I can do that in in-person spaces in the studio as well. So, you know, maybe we do have five women together and they're all doing slightly different things. I think that that's my that would make me so happy that we are just doing what feels right for us um, on any given moment and not worrying about what we should be doing or what other people are doing, I think. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's such an important lesson to learn that it is okay and it's needed that we do it our own way at all times, you know, and and trust our own intuition and, and do what feels right and leave behind what doesn't, you know, and I often say that to people with anything I'm delivering, it's like, you don't have to go along with all of this, just take and, you know, what works for you, pick and choose and leave behind the stuff that doesn't. And yeah, if you can facilitate that in an in-person group and women see other women doing that, you know, it's, it's quite magical, isn't it? Cause they can all lift each other up and say, actually, you know, we can do this our own way. And I think it's, yeah, and I, I think my big ethos is to be trauma informed and recognise that people will need different things and um, really honouring that, that mm. you, everybody brings their own experiences into a group and it's about being feeling, feeling safe and feeling that you are, you have landed somewhere where you are heard, where you're understood and where you can take things at the pace that you need to take them. So it's it's always a work in progress and you know we don't always get it right but that's that's what i'm striving to do yeah, um, yeah. i we can tell us don't we on this this experience that's what that's what people need they just need to feel seen and heard and and know that they're going to be looked after lovely and i can tell what the way you're talking about this helen is that you create very safe and nurturing spaces for that those discoveries to happen you know and I'm excited that you're now combining the online with the in-person and perhaps yeah. the pandemic has you know facilitated that in ways that we didn't think it would I know. um so what, what's I know you're still a work in progress right now and you're yeah. using the summer to get um, really clear but what, what, what can we expect yeah it's a liminal time isn't it of knowing how things are going to unravel and what's appropriate and what isn't mm. and my space is only small um, so I'm going to do a few things over summer, a couple of in-person things over the summer. Um, I've got a, a session that I run monthly called The Heart Space, which is online. So because I've met so many wonderful people across the, the world that have been coming online, I don't want to lose that community. So I will still be running that. And that's a, that's a fertility yoga session, but one very much you can take at your own pace. You can talk to me beforehand about where you're up to with things. Um, and there's, there's normally lots of restor restoration and guided meditation and breath work in there and a little bit of a chance to see who's there and have a chat or ask any questions if you want to. So that's that's my monthly session online. And then I will be doing my North Star course again in the autumn. I think I had 17 women join that in the spring and it was wonderful. Um, it was just a little community and it just felt gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to doing that again. And that's where we go on this journey of looking at your inner compass and we, we play around with north, south, east, and west, and we, we do lots of we do lots of things about reflecting and recalibrating on where we're up to with with our experience and where we want to go. Um, and then I'm going to be dipping and diving into slightly different things. I'll be doing some women's circles uh, in the studio, and I want to also work with people that have become pregnant and that are kind of in that landscape and working out what that you know we do, quite often don't think beyond because we're so concentrating on where we're going to get so I want to I want to, my community to be able to stay with me um, but I'm also very passionate about working with people honoring grief as well and honoring loss and honoring endings um, moving on when cycles haven't worked out that time when we're in that space of uh, grieving so there will be things that I'll be doing with that um, yeah all sorts of ideas bubbling up so kind of watch this space really 
Beautiful. I'll definitely be watching. I can't wait to see what's, what's on the horizon for you and your community. And I know the, the best place to, to meet with you and hang out with you is on Instagram, isn't it, Helen? Yes, that's my playground at the moment. My <laughs> workshop, my uh, website is evolving. But yeah, uh, Instagram is where I hang out, at the fold. So you can find me there. You can ask me anything at all. If you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure about any of that, and, or you need an idea or you want to ask questions about yoga and what might work at different points for you, then I'm always around in my direct messages or even if you're just having a about hard day I'm always there so if anyone's listening please consider me a resource beautiful thank you well I will add your Instagram handle onto the podcast page at fertilemindset.com slash podcast and we'll put your website link there as well because I think in the future you're going to have your dates and your events coming up and it's going to be yeah. yeah both ways to keep in touch with you Thank you so much for joining me today, Helen. This is a conversation that could go on for hours. I know it could. <laughs> and I hope this, that we do speak again um, in the future because I know there's, there's a lot of directions that this can go in. Um, and I'm really pleased that you are now kind of devoting yourself to this. You know, I know you've got your own family and obviously other things in your life, but you are so passionate about this. And I'm pleased that it is your kind of sole professional purpose now. It's amazing to see what's going to happen next. So thank you so thank much, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we'll be speaking to you soon as well in my sanctuary group um, with the members. So anyone who's listening who is a subscription member of the Fertile Mindset Sanctuary, you'll be able to come and chat to Helen directly as well. Just look out for your emails and there'll be a live chat happening soon for you. Thank yeah. you so much, Helen. We're looking Thank forward you. to that. Thanks very much, Sarah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I'm so pleased you're listening to the Fertile Mindset podcast and now I would love to invite you to join us in the Fertile Mindset Sanctuary. The Sanctuary is my fertility support membership which is focused on taking care of you and helping you enjoy your life while you wait for your baby. In the Sanctuary, I'll guide you through using an amazing technique called EFT or tapping and you'll soon be feeling less stressed and more joyful. If you're not already in the sanctuary, do come and join us today because the best time to start receiving support on your fertility journey is always right now. Honestly, it makes such a difference to have good quality emotional support and techniques that you can pick up and use yourself whenever you need them. Go to fertilemindset.com slash sanctuary to join us today. I look forward to hopefully seeing you there and at the next episode of the Fertile Mindset Podcast.